los puestos de relevancia eh, hace igual, incluso a veces hasta mejor. Prepare yourself for an intense adventure. Choose your best side to travel through time. Follow the instructions and shoot. Take a photograph. What do you think of the result? We are in the heart of the Mediterranean. The sun has risen. You and your clan, a group of men and women that have stopped being hunters and gatherers to become producers and farmers, start off the day. What things can you gather among what you see? Bows and arrows for hunting? Logs to transport the stones to be used to build a dolmen that is being built in a forest clearing? Seeds to plant a vegetable garden? Or animal skins and plant fiber to make clothes on the loom? You are correct. Women during the Neolithic Revolution had many occupations. Besides looking for healing roots and plants in the forest, they also made ceramics, bricks, loomed, and took care of the first animal herd. In ancient Egypt, women enjoyed great social prestige and had almost all the same legal rights as men. They could choose who they wanted to marry, could work for the same salary as men, or open their own business. Famous hieroglyphics that decorate Egyptian tombs represent women singers, musicians, dancers, servants, waitresses, businesswomen, bakers, priests, as well as in the highest position as pharaohs, such as Nefertiti. You are in the courthouse of your city. Do you know why you are here? Choose from the following options. Well, yes, in ancient Egypt, women could ask for a divorce as long as it was well defended before the judge. If it was granted to her, she was awarded custody of the children, plus her dowry and a third of her husband's wealth. They could also buy and sell properties without permission from their husbands, fathers or brothers. Puede que haya mujeres más volcadas en el trabajo, puede que haya hombres más volcados en las familias, pero tenemos que romper un poco todos estos tópicos para que la gente pues viva con... Women in ancient Greece enjoyed few liberties. Girls were educated at home. Their marriages were arranged amongst families while they were still really young. They didn't have the right to vote and they were only allowed to leave the house to attend important ceremonies. Which event do you think they could attend? The Olympics or going to make offerings to the gods? You are correct. As a woman, one of the few reasons you were allowed to leave the house was to attend religious ceremonies, such as the festival of Aloha, to which all the women of Athens would attend to make offerings of fruit and seeds to the goddess Demeter, her daughter Persephone, and the god Dionysus. The situation of women in ancient Rome was slightly more favorable than in Greece. She was considered a citizen, although she did not have the right to vote, and her role as a teacher in the education of her children was considered very important. She could accompany her husband to banquets in order to integrate herself into society and acquire its values. But 
Do you know what other things she could and could not do? Do you want to buy the hairband? It looks very nice. Or do you want to have a glass of wine at the bar? Watch out! You have drunk wine. Women are totally prohibited from doing so because men believe that women that drink are unfertile. Your husband kisses you on the mouth to see if you have. If you taste like wine, you can be whipped or even condemned to death. No, women in Rome could not buy jewellery or anything that had economic value. During the extended Middle Ages, many women that were healers and practiced natural remedies were accused of being witches and were persecuted by the ecclesiastic authorities, which actually had the power during those centuries. The Inquisition was created under the auspices of Pope Gregory IX, with the objective of persecuting heretics. But in the 15th and 16th century, witchcraft was added and became seen as heresy. A total of 100,000 trials and 50,000 executions occurred in all of Europe. 80% of those condemned were women. You have just been accused of being a witch. What do you do? Acknowledge it or do you claim innocence? We're oh, sorry. You have admitted that you are a witch, but you're still going to burn at the stake. The Inquisitors are convinced that you have been bargaining with the dead. Although you try to plead innocence until the end, nothing guarantees a fair trial. The Inquisition usually condemned 90% of those accused of witchcraft, heresy, or both. Good luck! The revolution has broken out. The declaration of the rights of man and the citizen has been approved. There is a lot of commotion on the streets. You observe that in the center of the city square, there is a huge crowd of people. You come closer and you see that King Louis XVI is about to be guillotined. What do you do? Scream in favor of the guillotine or do you oppose the king's death sentence? I'm sorry, you've made a mistake. For opposing the king's death sentence, you will also be guilty. Two years later, Olympe de will join you. Although she did promote the Declaration of the Rights of Women and the Citizen in 1791, the first historical document to propose the emancipation of women and their equality with men, she was accused of being a traitor to the revolution and was guilty. <laughs> Congratulations, you've saved your head. If you had opposed the king's execution, you would have been condemned for being a traitor to the revolution, and your head would now be the one under the guillotine blade. At the beginning of the 20th century, more than 70% of textile workers in the United States were women, the majority of them European immigrants. They had very low wages and worked up to 75 hours a week, and the working conditions for these young women were very hard. You are a new worker at the factory. Upon arriving, carrying a huge bag, the boss gets angry at you. Why? You didn't bring your own tools? Needles, thread, a sewing machine? Or because you arrived two minutes late?
If a person arrived late, workers paid the fine proportionate to the lost time. There was no way to escape this, one way or another. Indeed, workers had to contribute their own material, including the sewing machines, thread and needles. Moreover, if they damaged any fabric, they had to pay the price of what it was moving. It's 1932 and elections to parliament are taking place. As a woman, do you have the right to vote? Or do you keep walking and wait at a coffee shop nearby as your husband wants to vote? You are correct. On October 1, 1931, in the Constituent Assembly of the Second Spanish Republic, Clara Capoeira gave a famous speech during the discussion regarding Article 34 of the Constitution that served to convince the majority of Parliament members to vote for women's suffrage. It did, however, only last until 1936, at which time the Civil War began. You are having a great time at the Woodstock Musical Festival. Your boyfriend suggests going back to his tent to have some time alone. But you don't have any condoms. What do you do? You take off with him because you've been on the birth control pill for months since it's legal in the US. You tell him no because you have no kind of contraceptive available. You've been lucky. The birth control pill was legalized in 1960. Therefore, you've been able to buy it without a problem for the last nine years. You are 10 years old. You're in school. Which question can't you ask? A. Where do children come from? C. Who was Cleopatra? C. When did women start voting in Spain? D. What is menstruation? E. There are no questions that can't be asked. Exactly. You can ask them all. You are prepared to be a woman of the 21st century.